And we're back. Sorry for the late video. My upload schedule has been almost as bad as my sleep schedule lately. <laughs> there was a little girl here with arm outstretched, begging for help. I rushed over to her side. <laughs> she was faintly glowing. <laughs> あのね、お腹が苦しいの。<笑> All I could do for her was offer physical comfort. If I rubbed her back, maybe she'd feel better. The girl grimaced again as if she were experiencing some new pain all of a sudden. まだ無理しない方がいいよ。ね。うん。あなたもここに迷い込んだの。うん、わかんない。気がついたら<笑> Man, she sounds so adorable. A real trooper, that's something I say. I gently brushed my hand against the little girl's face, wiping away her tears. I only just met her, but I already really fell for her. She had it a lot worse than I did. Sachiko. Sachiko. さちこ。さちこちゃんって <笑> I took Sachiko's tiny little hand in my own and pulled her to her feet. Sachiko's hand was so thin and light compared to my own. Not just light, it almost felt like it was completely weightless. Did the dead skin, dead looking gray skin not give that away either? Sachiko noticed me staring at her I must have had quite a look on my face. This seemed to bother her so I did my best to force a smile. I'm so sure. I'm sure she was worried. I leave her all by herself again, and I wanted to make sure she knew I was here for her. <laughs> lowered her head and looked like she was about to cry. Darn crows outside. Sorry if you can hear those. I took Sachiko's hand in both of mine, turning to face her and ducking down a little so her eyes were level. I did have to think for a moment since I knew I couldn't take a ghost with me very far, but in the end I also couldn't just leave her. Sachiko-chan, you 
優しくしてくれるよ。I don't know if dependable is the word that I'd use for him. Her head was still down, but her eyes were peeking up at me. She looked nervous, but for the first time since we started talking, she also looked hopeful. Sachiko, do you want to go together? Oh! I'm not a person. Yuka is... お姉ちゃんがそばにいるからね。Honestly, I was lonely too. I probably wanted her with me just as badly as she wanted someone with her. Ghost or no? さあ、行こう、サチコちゃん。I turned. I, I think that's supposed to be a you. Just the text is being dumb. I turned to head back down the hall, but was stopped by Sachiko tugging at my uniform. She was wearing a forced smile on her face, but still looked uneasy. お姉ちゃん、私の言うこと聞く言うこと言うことってふっ。<笑> What was she going to tell me to do? I was so surprised by the question, I wasn't sure how best to respond, but the longer I thought about it, the more uneasy she looked, so. えっと、お姉ちゃんね、あなたのお話なら聞くよ。You dumb. ほんとうん。だから、何でも話してね。うん。There's clearly something specific she had in mind, but I wasn't gonna push her about it. She'd ask me when she was ready. She seemed satisfied with my answer and let go of my uniform, and so hand in hand we continued down the hall in search of my Oni-chan. And now we got this music. And. Oh. Okay. Alright, let's not freeze this time. Okay, which buttons do I hit again? Oh, well, I actually got the right one. Sachiko chan, koko wa koai kara yame yo. So na no? Nani ka aru no? えっと、見ない方がいいものなの。きっと、怖い思いをすると思うの。だから、サチコちゃんにも見てもらいたくないな。うん。お姉ちゃんがそう言うなら。よかった。また死体を見なくて。もう、なくいんね。Uh, this one. Okay. Hmm. Forgot where to go. I'm just gonna take a wild guess and assume here. I think something happens here. Since we already looked at all the hall spaces, don't want to waste too much time looking at them again. Locks it out. I didn't think it did. I'm trying to remember which. I think that's the chapter. Yeah, I think that wandering around music out there is the chapter four theme. I want to say from the first game. Might be the three one. I don't remember which one is which. That's all she said, and then silently she squatted on the ground and wrapped her arms around her knees. She nodded firmly, almost exaggeratedly. 
幽霊でも痛みを感じるならきっと寒さも感じるよねかわいそう As if to show me just how cold she was, she started visibly shivering. Ne, Sachiko chan, Nanika Yuka ni dekiru koto nai? Nanika. So, Sachiko chan ga, kore i chao tsuraku nara nai yo ni. Nan de mo itte? Ja. O ne chan no sore, chow dai. She was pointing at my feet. This was the first time I noticed that Sachiko was walking around barefoot. I was so busy worrying about myself and about finding Onichan that I completely failed to pay any attention to poor Sachiko's appearance. Oh yeah, that's that's a face that says it's alright. Sachiko shook her head. If I were only Chan, I would have noticed her right away and giving her my, given her my shoes. But it wasn't too late. I took off my shoes and socks and offered them to Sachiko. They were a little wet, but still better than walking on these cold dirt floors and bare feet. I didn't really like the idea of doing that myself, but just one look at this poor lost soul shaking form convinced me I was doing the right thing. Sachiko took just the socks, leaving the shoes in my hand. She flashed a gentle smile at me, which stayed on her face the whole time she slowly put on both of my socks. Oh, well, aren't you sweet? Yeah, what a nice girl. I patted her head just like Onichan always did to me. <laughs> her smile had grown and now stretched from cheek to cheek, and I began to feel like I'd do anything at all to keep her happy. I wondered if this was how Onichan felt when I smiled at him like that. Despite the severity of the situation, I was in high spirits. I almost forgot just how horrible this place really was. I thought that was a giggle, but it sounded different somehow, like her voice had changed to someone else's, or someone else was here. <laughs> yeah, just the wind. What was it they usually say in movies? Must have been the wind. Not too likely in a stagnant underground bunker like this, but still. I put on the bravest face I could, I could manage and marched back out into the hall, pausing only to make sure Sachiko was still behind me. Oh, n another random music change to the theme in the first game when Kizumi chases Yuka. Oh, body pool's open again. Save time. Gotta keep saving, because it's gonna freeze. Oh, we went in. Sachiko had come to a halt and was grabbing loosely on the cuff of my skirt to stop me as well. I'm surprised they even left us back in here. Over where? Oh man, look at all these bodies, there's so many. Oh. It's a half decayed skeletal corpse. Age and gender are virtually impossible to determine from outer appearance alone. There is a beep. There is also a student ID name tag, however, bearing a decidedly male name. Takane Municipal Middle School, Yuki Tanaka. Takane Municipal. Uh, 
this one. Attacked with bladed weapon by unknown assailant. Died of blood loss, markings carved into body. Age 13. Hmm. Ah, uh, do they all have name tags? It's a half decayed skeletal corpse. Ancient gender, blah 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 blah. It's a student ID name tag. Yeah. Karasuyama High School, Tsuyoshi Kawasaki. Suffocated after tongue severed by sharp object. Shobu University Middle School, Akiko Sekine. Oh, where's the rest of it? Komashiro Trade School, Asuka Mizuno. Newest member of the school news paper club, enthusiastic about her work, but never let it show outwardly. Rubens Academy Senior High School, Satomi Kurogi. What the hell, I can't find a Satomi Kurogi. This is the closest one, though, so I assume this is it. Died of loneliness. Oh, just like that guy in the first game. Is every one of these seriously gonna have a name? This is gonna build the darkening up so high. Oh, okay. Some of these ones don't have them. Nope. Maybe only the ones near the shore have them. Alright, well, I'm just gonna assume none, none of the other ones have it, because this is getting my darkening a bit too high. Let's -a go. Back to the bathroom. The soles of Sachiko's feet seemed to be bothering her quite a bit as she stood there. I noticed she was fidgeting in place, trying not to stand on them. She said nothing else, she just stared at my feet. She seemed to want my shoes now, but didn't want to say anything since I offered them earlier and she turned them down. So I just smiled and decided I'd offer them again. I wouldn't accept any objections, I just took off my shoes and handed them to Sachiko without another word. Cheerfully, she slipped them on over my socks. Hmm. They were a little big on her, but I knew she'd feel better just having them. Yay. Sachiko wasn't used to such big floppy shoes, she took one step and tumbled forward. Hmm. I don't remember it bringing me here. Sachiko was pointing down the hall, toward the spot where the earthquake had dropped me. Tachiko nodded firmly, then practically dragged me by the hand over to the door near my entry point in this underground maze. There's a body. Energetic as, she, as can be, Sachiko pulled me farther into the darkened room. I suddenly felt a sharp pain in the sole of my foot and looked down to see what I'd stepped on. Oh, that's good. 
floor here was actually kind of a mess. It was bumpy and uneven. There were all kinds of tiny, sharp-looking objects scattered everywhere. Not just old, rusty nails, but bits of glass, loose wooden boards with jagged edges and splinters all over them, and plenty else I couldn't even identify. Buddy. There are a set of bleach white bones in a heap against the wall. Sachiko just stood there with her head hung low and a <clears throat> look of disdain on her face. She didn't say another word. It seemed safe to assume, assume that she probably didn't have any memories from when she was alive at all. Looking a bit closer at the pile of bones, there's a student ID name tag jutting out from one of the victims from the victim's ribcage, identifying her as female. Renaissance Elementary School, y Yukari Sekia. Died gradually from massive blood loss. What else is there in here? There's a desk in the corner of the room. Something seems to have fallen underneath it. Sachiko bent down and lifted the camera gingerly as if it were some kind of a rare treasure, then she pointed at me and pressed the shutter button. Yay, she's happy. Nothing else over here? Hmm. It's a stack of folded up Japanese style futons. Carefully tiptoeing across the litter strewn floor, nursing my sore and bloody foot the whole time, I snaked my way over to the futons. I didn't much like the idea of sleeping in the same room as, room as a dead child, but I had to admit I was pretty exhausted too. As soon as the futon was on the ground as flat as it would go, Sachiko sprawled out on it. It wasn't long before her eyes started drooping. Just seeing this innocent little girl joyously stretching out to take a nap was enough to lift my spirits and renew my hope. Yeah, you're so safe with her here. She really must have been tired. She was out like a light the second her head touched the bedding. Yeah, Sachiko's so cute with her dead skin. I woke to find myself being shaken. Sachiko was trying to get me up and her expression had gone white as a sheet. 
お姉ちゃんな何 She was on the verge of tears. Something seemed to have really spooked her. Did that huge man find us? Was she attacked? The two of them, uh, what, stupid text. The two of us searched every last inch of the room. Me with a wounded foot. But we came up empty handed. The entire time we searched, Sachiko hadn't said a word. I was hoping invoking our sisterly bond might help cheer her up. She raised her right hand slowly and pointed it to my headband. As soon as I refused, Sachiko let out a faint otherworldly groan. The next moment, her face distorted and changed. She no longer looked like an innocent little girl. She looked well and truly like a demon now. In her eyes alone sent chills down my spine. These were the eyes of someone who meant me harm and was perfectly capable of inflicting it. Give her the headband. Save time. Stand firm. Sachiko was continuing to groan under her breath. Fearing what she might be capable of, I desperately tried to console her. Somehow or another, that seemed to quell her anger. Her facial expression snapped back into that of the gentle, kind girl I've been talking to all this time. Yeah, you just accidentally saved yourself. She was oddly receptive to receptive to this explanation and seemed fascinated by it. Maybe I'd cause her to remember something about her own mother. She was a little girl after all, so her mom was probably really dear to her in life. She looked like she was on the verge of tears again. I was beginning to feel bad that I even broached the subject. Well, if you didn't, you would have died. She still seemed a bit sad, but she nodded. Maybe she understood that I wouldn't give her my headband, and maybe she was okay with it. Ah, uh, yeah. Don't know why it's playing, this is not a very suitable time to play it, but who am I to complain? Oh, yeah, beeping. I'm gonna have to cut out some of it. That's not good. ここにはうん。早く行こうよ。やっぱり拗ねちゃったのかな。Like, does this seem like a suitable time to play this song to anyone else? This is like the worst time to play it. Hmm, should I go to the... nah.
ねえサチコちゃんサチコちゃんねえサチコちゃんあのね、カチューシャはあげられないけど、他のものならいいよ。他のものうん、私にできることなんて少ないけど。他のものじゃあ、ここ。でも、ここは。We were already in here before. Without a moment's hesitation, Satsuko just opened the door and walked right in. I didn't even have an opportunity to stop her. No, the music's gone. The first thing I noticed when I entered the room was Satsuko's form sprawled out on the ground at the foot of the body pool. She was twitching a bit and moaning again, but this time it sounded more like a moan of pain than of anger. I stepped over her and turned around as, so as to put the decaying bodies behind my back and out of my sight and started shaking her. I felt like I absolutely needed to snap her out of whatever this was before something terrible happened. I could feel her tiny cold hand on my abdomen through the thin cloth of my skirt. She was pushing me backwards with tremendous force. I lost my balance and almost instantly toppled over. Well, almost instantly and toppled over. It somehow felt like my fall occurred in slow motion. The walls and ceiling of the room grew more and more distant, but it happened gradually. <laughs> Then I felt the murky liquid on my back and I heard the splash. I was in the pool of bodies. Because I'd fallen backwards, it took me far too long to regain my bearings. I, had, I was submerged in that horrible, tainted water close to drowning. I finally broke through the surface, dodging the many dislodged eyeballs that were floating on it like peas and chicken soup. And lungs, too. Each one. Wrapped in dull red bulging veins. I didn't even want to think about what was in all the water I'd swallowed. Unfortunately, much of it was still on my tongue. My mouth was filled with tiny bits and pieces of other human beings. The taste was overpowering. I was gagging and belching so hard it felt like I was going to regurgitate all my internal organs. I tried to scream, but I could barely get any sound past the foul, lumpy stew in my mouth. I was losing consciousness fast, and I remember silently praying, silently hoping that this was all just a dream. As the world faded around me, I just kept focusing on that one last wish. Please let me wake up in my bed. I had no other choice. I grabbed Sachiko's outstretched arm and marveled again at her strength as she effort effortlessly pulled me out of the water. <laughs> My entire body from head to toe was covered in sticky, goopy chunks of unidentifiable human flesh from countless different people. Slowly, hesitantly, I raised my hand to my head to feel around and determine what this something might be. I wasn't looking forward to the answer. What I felt was a huge clump of matter stuck to my hair, and just touching it lightly caused some, some of it to stick to my hand as well. It was a massive ball of fingers and toes.
The severed digits were all so sticky and slimy that they'd gotten completely wrapped up in my hair like rollers. They weren't coming out easy. I must have passed out. When I came to, I was lying on the ground with Sachiko looking over me. She was on the verge of tears again. But wasn't that her voice I heard giggling at me? If not, then whose was it? Yeah, just the wind again. That had to be it. This sweet little girl couldn't possibly have been that twisted. <laughs> I didn't care how filthy I was. As long as Sachiko was alright, that was all that mattered. Yes, she was my little sister now. After all, I had to take care of her. I had to look after her. Oh,姉ちゃん,遅いよ。うん。待って、サチコちゃん。どうしちゃったんだろう。足が重い。Somehow, Sachiko had wound up in the lead, and I was following her blindly, struggling to keep up with her blistering pace. <laughs> I looked down at my uniform. Sure enough, it was soaked through with the blood of those poor victims in the body pool and smelled really awful. So, so <laughs> yeah, my bad. I didn't recall saying that or even trying to say that. It's like my mouth was moving on its own, speaking someone else's thoughts. If this was how she was going to treat me, then why was I being so nice to her? Why was I doing whatever she asked of me? It was bothering me, and yet it wasn't. I honestly didn't care anymore. I was content just to follow this abusive little girl to the ends of the earth. How long had I been walking, I wondered. I was following Sachiko despite myself. I had no idea how much time had passed, but it felt like an eternity. And she completely stopped answering any of my questions. She came to a halt. She turned and looked up at me with wide, innocent eyes. What was it going to be this time? I honestly didn't want to know, but the question came out of my mouth anyway, and so did this. Somehow, some part of me knew this was coming. It was only a matter of time. I like this song. Once again, I couldn't seem to control the words coming out of my mouth. It just said whatever it wanted to say, regardless of how I felt. <laughs> she was laughing again. It was wild, crazy laughter. She was ecstatic. Sachiko's smile almost seemed to twinkle in the dull light of the corridor. She had the face of an angel. But it was all just a mask. I mustered all the strength I had, trying with whatever life was left in me to denounce her words and resist her pull. There was no hope for me anymore, but I still clung to what I could. If I could just reject her statement and tell her she was wrong. 
shook and spasmed uncontrollably. I was being overtaken by an invisible force. It was compelling me to speak, to say what would be my very last words on this earth. A suicide note when you get right down to it. It was instantaneous. With one single blow, my skull was cracked wide open with blood splattered far and wide. I could feel blood trickling out from my nostrils and my right ear. My brain was jutting out from inside my head, fully exposed to the air, but I was still conscious. I could still feel everything. How are you even alive? Oh yeah, you're Yuka. That's right, you can survive anything. Well, at least for a time. <laughs> I saw a bright flash of light and realized she'd just take my picture with that instant camera she'd been holding onto. <laughs> ah, yes. I will talk about this in a little while. Sachiko was such a cute little girl before, but now her face was twisted into a hateful, spiteful grimace as she looked down on me in contempt. Zetsuko began petting my sticky, matted head with her coarse, sticky hands in a mockery of my previous gentleness with her. My scrap of paper from the charm? We did it! And now I'm going to talk about the ending. Because if you remember in the first game, yay, we did it. So if you remember in the first game, that is a wrong end. That picture, Sato, Sachiko gives it to Satoshi. He, Satoshi finds Yuka's body, gets the darkening. Yoshiki gets the darkening in that ending because... Because he gets the darkening, I'm not sure why. Ayumi gets the darkening and kills Naomi, and then, yeah, so yeah, everyone dies. And that's, that's, that's it. So I think chapter 6 should have been the last chapter. Well, not the last. It should have been chapter 7. Because chapter 7 is a 
prequel, I guess you could say. Like, it's canon. It doesn't take place in the time loop, but this is a can- this is canon, but it takes place before all of this. So I think they should have switched these two around. It would have made it so much more sense that way. But anyway, thank you for watching, and goodbye.